Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to walk you through uh, developing standard compliant uh, systems in TypeScript. TypeScript is basically typed JavaScript. It was developed by the same uh, guy who developed C Sharp and designed C Sharp and, uh, 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 and, and basically it's going to help you develop pluggable, maintainable configurable software, software that you can share with a community of people around the world and they'll be able to contribute to it and help you kind of evolve it and develop it because it follows a particular set of practices and patterns and sometimes even the same tools. So without any further ado, let me just kind of, if this is the first time you see this video, if you're a TypeScript guy, obviously I don't think you've seen any of my videos because uh, I, I don't assume that because I'm mostly in the .NET world. Sometimes I'll play with Scala, Kotlin, you know, and other programming languages to kind of show you, you know, how to implement the standard. But, you know, take a look at what the standard theory is and let me show you how we're going to implement it. So for a high level perspective, the standard theory has a, has a theory called the try nature of things. It assumes that every system in the universe Every system, seen and unseen, has basically three components, three main components that exist in every system in the world. It makes things easier to understand this way. It either has a dependency, plus a purpose, plus an exposure. What does this mean? A system cannot exist without relying on something to survive. You, as a human being, you are a system, and you rely on food to be able to continue to live and water to continue to live, you rely on many, many things to survive. So that's your dependency. Pay attention to the colors here because I'm going to use them extensively to describe other things that eventually map up to these exact same principles. Um, and then there's a purpose. The purpose is what you what you want to do, what you like to do. Some people like to paint, some people like to design, some people like to write software, and some people like myself like to teach people you know, about new things and other things. And then there's the exposure layer. Every system in the world, in order for it to be able to interact with other systems, right, and systems are very interconnected in our universe, it needs an exposure layer. You as a system, as a biosystem, you use your mouth to communicate ideas. You talk to people, you use your ears to listen to their ideas. So that's your exposure layer, your input output, right? Our universe is nothing but many, many systems that follow that exact same pattern. And these systems, if you look at the larger scheme of things, these systems basically communicate to each other through, you know, they're dependent on each other. So the food that I just told you about, that it's a dependency, is a system in and of itself. It has its dependencies, it has its purpose, it has its exposure. And then that very system that basically is a consumer also becomes you know, a, a foundation for some other system. And within that realm, you can see that systems themselves are fractal. They basically represent dependencies, they represent exposure, and then they're larger, they're part of even larger and larger systems like that in the universe, right? That basically are dependencies and exposures for each other. So it's fractal, it basically works upwards and downwards. Look, this guy has a dependency, a systems within systems within systems in our universe that basically work in the exact same manner. So this multi-system, you know, kind of collection of system talks to another collection of systems and they basically all work together. So this becomes a dependency, this guy becomes the exposure and this and so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? So it basically works this way. Let's revert all that and go back to the original system that we were just talking about, right? So this, at, the, at this point, as a system, there is something that you use every day, even while you're watching this YouTube video, that you're actually using this system. You're using a mobile app or a web app so you can stream this video. And this mobile app is talking to an API endpoint, an API endpoint that's streaming that content to you. It's not sitting on your phone, it's sitting on a server somewhere. And this API endpoint has to also call some storage unit to be able to pull that content from somewhere. Watch, watch what's happening here. So basically, you have an API, right? You have storage, and you have a mobile app or a web app. Sounds a lot like your dependency, purpose, and exposure layer. The computer that you're using right now, it has keyboard and mouse uh, and, and a monitor. These are your exposure layer. It has a, a processing unit, and it relies on electricity. Everything falls within that kind of pattern. 
and if you and if you think that's a cool kind of theory to think about I'm gonna show you here how you can implement a standard compliant system at the software level you can apply it to anything but you can do it here I'm gonna implement a storage broker something that talks to a database and a student service you know and maybe our, our, our exposure here will be just the test you know the test that basically kind of calls all of that it can be any exposure layer you like it's whatever triggers the service I'm gonna show you how to implement that we're gonna walk through a scenario where you're basically adding a student in a database we're not actually going to talk to a real database. We're just going to mock the dependency and inject that dependency and pass parameters to it and verify that things are actually working. Okay, I'm going to use a um, WebStorm, which is you know just a project uh, uh, from uh, IntelliJ. You know, create Git repository. Let's call this um, a standard standard uh, dot universal dot TypeScript. So that's my project. It doesn't have much in it. It just has a source file and it says happy developing. Nothing much here, right? And, you know, I'm kind of basically saying install dependencies. It's just doing some work for me that, you know, I may or, I may or may not need. I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit for people. This control shift period for people who use these uh, platforms to so just know what, what, they, what they have to do here. Okay, let's get started. Let's, let's start building that structure that I just talked about. So I'm going to go here and say, well, I have brokers, you know, that's what I just said. And I have services and I need a model. And this model is basically where I'm going to kind of put the data that I care about. I'm going to go under these brokers and basically set up a, um, a storages, which is basically where the storage broker is going to be. I'm going to set up under the models, students which is the student model that I'm going to build watch that structure and then I'm going to also set students under services and we're going to fill these these folders with with things right let's start from the model it always starts from the model if you go to the typescript and you type student in here and basically and basically go and you know create a student model right so I'm going to go here I'm going to add a student model like that and then I'm going to go and say, uh, here is export. Export is like saying public, right? And there is class and this is student. So this student here will have an ID that's a number and it will also have a name that's a string. Okay, that's that's these two. And then I'm going to go under storage it and create an interface. It's not actually, so I'm going to go and say storage broker like that, but I'm actually creating an interface. So export uh it's trying to assume what i'm what i'm thinking so export interface i storage broker i'm going to use the naming convention because typescript technically has the same father i don't think he would mind if i use the same naming convention as c sharp i'm gonna type in here insert student and it is it's expecting a student to be passed in and it's also expected to be returning a student automatically pulled in the model for me which i really appreciate about ids these way these days they basically are fast enough to kind of understand so insert student this is an interface it doesn't have an implementation and we actually don't need an implementation because we're going to mock mock that dependency and verify only the purpose the service what it's doing let's go to the service itself and let's write in student service in here and it's a class, so it's export class student service, but this guy has dependencies, right? The dependency here is the storage broker, right? So this is your I storage broker like this. And then I need a constructor. This is how you do constructors for people that come from different programming language. This is how you do the constructor. So it's storage broker like that. And then you basically say this, this is like C sharp storage broker equals it. So it's basically me setting up the dependency to a private class member and that private class member will kind of be called within that service. Not just yet, but it will be called. I'm going to go here and say add student. That's the function that I want to implement. And it takes in a student as an input and it basically throws an error that says method not implemented. That's all. That's all we're doing here. Right? So this is a service that will be test driven. The test will be written first before we actually write the implementation to make sure we're only writing just enough code to make sure that tests pass, right? And you should get smart about that. Like if you're pairing with someone, you should write just the bare minimum of code to make sure that this is 
this is enough. Okay, so that's the source folder. I'm going to go and create a new folder in here called tests. And under tests, I'm going to create services. And then I'm going to create students because I'm testing the student service like that. Here comes the, you know, some gymnastics for command line. I need to install a test framework called Jest, right? And Jest will help me kind of mock and run the test and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to remember that off the top of my head, but hey, I saved it somewhere so we can so we can just move forward with with the demo that I have here for you. So I'm just going to go here and say npm install save div something or other. Let's see here. Why is it complaining? It's saying uh, oh, it needs to be npm. I, I copied it, but wrong here. You just need to know how to copy things to get that one running. All right, and installed things like 288 package <laughs> for all that. And then uh, I want to initialize something called a configuration. So the configuration will help it know where to find test files, right? So here you go. I did the configuration. So if I scroll down here, you see jest.config. That's my configuration file. Now, maybe I can go here and create a TypeScript file. I'm going to call it student service.tests. Dot .ts right so it, it it looks for that but you can control the you see the transform you, you see the regex that it put it puts in here to find you know its test file so you could probably change that to make it do whatever you want here's the interesting part you know let's start writing some tests so this is for the student service tests and then i want to go and say i want to set up my dependencies right so i'm going to go here and say let write uh, storage broker mock so I'm mocking my storage broker and that will be mocked it's supposed to kind of you know add in the dependency for me here but I'm gonna go ahead and say mock this i storage broker like that and it's smart enough that if I do control period it should know function declaration mock it should be just dot mocked basically something like that is it not able to find the things that I care about. Just give it a second here. It should be mock, storage broker mock. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, before that, let me just do this first. This is uh, mocked and then I storage broker like that. And then if I do this, it will insert. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. And then I want student service. So that's just a student service. And then before each, before H is basically saying, do these things every time you try to um, run a test. So before each uh, test run, do these things, right? What do I want to do here? I want to pick up that storage broker mock and say that this guy is going to have a mocked function in it called insert student. Insert student and the type of it it's going to equal just dot function like that. So it's t it's a it's a mocked function in here. And I think this needs to be like that. Yeah, there you go. That's one. What else? I want to pass that mocked inject that dependency into my service. So this is my student service equal new student service and pass in here. What I want to pass in my storage broker mock. Unlike C sharp, unlike the mock framework specifically, you wouldn't need to say mock that object or any of that nonsense in here. Like in C sharp, you have to go and say that object. You don't need to do that in here. It's cool. Okay, so we set up our dependency. Now we need to set up our tests. The the structure here is a little bit different. We use partial classes in C sharp. In here we can use, you know, nested describes, right? I can go here and say, well, you know, student add or add student. So that's the overall overarching picture, right? And inside of it, I can go and say it, not F, it should insert student or should add student. Let's call it should add student because it should say should error on validation. It should throw an exception. This is how it's going to be broken, basically. Here you go. Here you go. So this is actually my test. I want to make sure before I write anything, that these tests actually run. So I'm going to put some configurations here. Here's my jest. Click run. This guy should come green because there are no tests actually. 
let's see, test found, no test found, right? So, oh, it looks at dot test, not tests. So let me rename that file to say dot test like that. There you go. And then if I run this again, see, it's looking for very particular, but you can change the, 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 the regex, like I said. Yeah, there you go. So it ran this test here and it basically just said, you know, all good. You know, there's nothing here in that test. No error happened, so no problem, right? Now, let's break our test into given, when, and then. Here's where it gets interesting. This is very standard kind of way to break down the, your ideas, to represent your ideas in a language that everyone else understands. I'm going to create a random student, right? And that's a student of type student, student. And that guy is... Oh, they didn't pull the depends here, that guy yet? Surprising. And that guy has an ID, and that ID is like, I don't know, one, and then name. Let's put the name for this guy to be um, uh, John, like that, okay? I'm going to define some other variables, and you'll see why. It's the same thing. It's the same value, but these variables, the names of the variables need to make sense in terms of the context of this, like when you're reading the context, you should understand, you shouldn't be inserting random student and returning random student. It doesn't make sense. I want input student, which is also a student, and it equals this random student. I want expected, uh, I, I want inserted student. That's a student that has been inserted in the database, student like that and that guy also comes from the input student so we pass input student it came back to us here you go and then the last thing expected student which is also of type student this is just your enterprise guy kind of trying to make his way through a loosely typed language right now the interesting thing after that is that I want to set up my mock I want that storage broker mock to pretend that when I pass something to it it comes back to me with something else how do I do that? Check it out. So I'm going to go here and say this 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 guy, insert student implementation, mock implementation. It's not the best language in the world, but here we go. Mock implementation once. And this guy, when it's called, return, return what? Return the inserted student. Like that. So whatever this guy is being called with, return my inserted student. I still need to see how can I strictly say that particular uh, uh, parameter being passed in and don't return anything if any other parameter has been passed to you. We'll get to that part. Now I have my actual student that comes back when I call the service. So this is your student service add student. I'm passing in my input. So you see the language makes sense here because your variable name is kind of playing really well with 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 the place where it's at. So I'm returning an inserted student after I insert but I'm passing an input student. And down here, I'm going to go and say expect, right, um, uh, actual student, which comes from the to be, to be expected student, strictly to the reference here, right? There's one more to this. I want to make sure that my storage broker mock that insert student, watch this, right? Um, to have been called nth time, one time with that particular input, which is the input student. So I'm basically saying verify in here that my dependency, let me zoom out a little bit just so people can see the whole test. Here you go. So see what I did there. Let me minimize that guy. We don't need that guy here. So there are three pieces to this. Again, try nature, like dependency, purpose, and exposure. This is how you verify. It's, it's everywhere. Try nature is everywhere, right? But the purpose here of breaking this apart is just to say, I'm going to set up a bunch of variables and my mock, and I expect when this call happens, whatever I passed in here to be the one that comes back and verify that this guy has been called with the right parameters. Now this guy should fail. Let's run it and see, because it's test driven. So you're failing first, and then later you're passing. See, it says method not implemented. Beautiful. Right now, I get to go and commit that because it's test driven. Your your Git history, your GitHub history, should reflect the same idea. So I'm just gonna go here and say, hey, add all of these, and uh, should add student fail. So this is me basically passing in a commit. It's called a purist approach, where you basically say, 
I am specifically saying, what are these unversioned un files? Oh, I should probably include that. Yeah, I should probably include that. Let's include that. So commit file. Uh, yeah, probably. Like that. Can I do this? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so so this is this is your committed files, right? I basically pushed all that up there because that JS module is kind of important. Now, what happened when we ran this test? Let's take a look. When I run this test, it's giving me the right error. It's basically saying method not implemented. So that's great because you're starting with a fail. You're starting with an expectation and then you're fulfilling that expectation. So if I go back to my service in here and I say, oh, you were returning method not implemented. Now I'm going to go and say this dot storage broker dot insert student with that student in here. Right. And then go back and run the same test. Watch what happens. Watch the fireworks. Going back here and then run the student. Look, look, passed. Right. So now I get to go again and make a commit and say, actually, this guy now passed. Because now I'm going to include this guy and say, look, I, I, I failed a test. And then I passed the test again to make it pass. Make sense? Now let's see if we can push this guy upstream. So refresh, uh, commit and push, select files, I don't know. Commit all and push. Define remote. Oh, I need to create a repo for this. Let's create a quick repo for this here. GitHub. Uh, let's create. So it's standard. Yeah, standard. Uh, TypeScript. Standard dot universal. Dot TypeScript. I know you can't see that one. It's fine. Um, it's it's for the purpose of let me create that. Here's the URL. I'm going to put the URL here. Uh, remote. My remote is called what? Main. Oh, that's, that's just defining the remote. Okay, so here we go. And then I'm going to push that so people can log in via GitHub. Sure. Authorize through GitHub. Sure. There you go. Not too bad. Not too bad, uh, IntelliJ. Doing great. Okay, so, so that repo is now out there, right? I'm going to share the link with you so you can just kind of see it right and see here you go I'm gonna refresh this uh, pushed it as master that's uh, okay load def yeah it, did. Mm -hmm. it pushed this as master okay I'll fix that problem don't worry about it but that's basically the idea test driven development you're pushing this through you're basically making sure that you know you have everything here right and you have you know you test you've test driven a, a TypeScript software according to the standards easy to maintain it's easy to work with uh, if if you've never you know heard about the standard this is your chance if you come from a JavaScript world or TypeScript world this is your chance take a look at it tell me what you think uh, I appreciate you watching and if you have any questions comments and concerns please feel, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching